A lot of times the reason why people uh, burn out or die is the money. Yeah. And it's not just the money. When you look at the news right now, you're a contractor. I don't care where you're at. You turn on the news and you're disappointed in what you see. I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. You're on Democrat, you're on Republican, you're not happy about where the future is going because it's uncertain. What's up, contractors, blue-collar entrepreneurs, door-to-door sales pro? I'm with a blue-collar boss here, Patrick Carr. What's up, my man? How How you doing, doing, buddy? I'm doing really well, thanks. It doesn't matter what kind of contractor you are. If you're a door-to-door guy, if you're an entrepreneur, there's one thing that holds people back from growth. Now, there's a lot of frustrating stuff going on with... um, fraud and lies and accusations of the ruling class stealing the election, media stealing the election, social media up against everybody. And the truth is, is that the billionaires are more in control now than they've ever been. Mm -hmm. And you know what's just not right? That my guys, that my contractors, that the people that go out there and make America great again can't get their hands on working capital. Mm -hmm. Patrick, there's an epidemic out there of misinformation when it comes to funding and Hopefully here during this podcast, you're going to learn some, some, some tips. Some, we're going to go over what we've seen contractors fail at with, with financing and cash flow and operations. The biggest failures, I've, I've been once a million dollars in debt due to bad collections processes, due to many of the different things that happens with growth. Yeah. Look, a lot of times during that time, I was ashamed, dude. I mean, I hate to say this, but you know, drinking too much uh, as a public figure, people calling me out. It look, my uncle died from suicide, and I can tell you that contractor burnout can kill you. Whether mm-hmm. it's drug overdose, whether it's um, drunk driving accident, whether it's suicide, and and a lot of times the reason why people uh, burn out or die is the money. Yeah, and it's not just the money. When you look at the news right now, you're a contractor. I don't care where you're at. You turn on the news. And you're disappointed in what you see. I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. You're on Democrat, you're on Republican, you're not happy about where the future is going because it's uncertain. And what makes you uncertain is what kind of money am I going to have in my bank account? How am I going to fund my business and keep it moving? And that's what a contractor is going to keep them up at night. You know, I see everybody out there online. And, you know, if you scroll down Instagram, you scroll down YouTube, everybody's going to promise you 12 new leads. Buy my, I'm going to get you whatever you want. I'm going to get you great leads here today. Looks like they just woke up out of high school bed. They, well, this, they can't sell. You know, what is that old saying? If you can't sell, you teach type deal. These guys have never actually run a business. They're just telling you what the next greatest thing is to go in and get leads. So they're selling you a product to go get the leads. In the meantime, the leads you already have, the roofs you've already put on, you haven't been paid for. You've put on a roof, but you haven't gotten the insurance proceeds. You're waiting on an ACV check right there as a contractor. You're waiting on a depreciation check, and then you get it in the mail and it's not bankable. You got to send it off to a mortgage company and wait for them. Look, there's a freaking epidemic because these insurance companies, I don't know if you saw, but State Farm, they they have huge donations to uh, Joe Biden. and, and, And I'm not trying to say anything about, you know, being right or wrong, but I can tell you that they're not like a good neighbor. They do not care. The more and more people that get in this business, the longer they make us wait for our money. Yep. And the more competitive it gets, the more that the contractors and the salespeople squeeze our margins. And so you take away a middle class guy's uh, time to get paid, plus you shrink his margin and his livelihood, his legacy, his future business, the ability to pass his business on to his son the way my dad did to me is in jeopardy. And what happens when your business gets shut down? What happens? Yep. So. What I would say about that is the biggest building downtown is an insurance building for a reason. They're not there to pay out top quality. They're not there to pay you directly and immediately. As a contractor, oftentimes what what struggle with when it comes to growth is that you are having to worry about getting checks from an insurance company and a mortgage company at the same time. You are doing work and then you are getting paid for that work. That is a terrible place to be in if you are a contractor. You've got to do something about cash flow if you want to grow as a company. You're going to have costs that are going to be there. When you put on a roof, you've got costs. You need to make sure you can pay for those costs. And when you put on five roofs, 10 roofs, now you're putting on 20 roofs. Well, now you got costs for those things. 
If you don't have the money coming in the door immediately, if you at the end of the month are looking at it and going, where the hell's my cash flow? Well, it's waiting over here with Wells Fargo for them to do an endorsement. Good luck getting that money back from them. What we need to look at is how do we ensure that you're always cash flow positive, that you always have the money in the bank, that you're never having to front that, that you know the money that's coming in each and every month to your business. Let me tell you what I do. I have to slow down to speed up. When I got myself into a million dollar in, in debt and my supply company lines were shut down, it's because I was building jobs that had mortgage companies without taking first checks. It was because I wasn't disciplined to have the back end systems to follow up on my invoices, on my supplements, didn't have an internal supplement to team. And so as I scaled, I scaled expenses and slowed down collections. And what happens is eventually the, the music stops. And so, um, you know, that was about four years ago, and I can remember sitting in church and like living, literally giving up my financial situation to God, and it felt like a miracle just to let go of that burden, but no bank came and bailed me out. The only way I was able to bail myself out was actually I had to slow down to speed up. And if you're watching this right now and you're dealing with cash flow crunches, it's the elephant in the room. If you're a contractor, a roofer, you do insurance, it's not about how much you're selling. If you're the owner, do you know what it feels like to do 20 million in revenue and yet pay yourself like $200,000? It's absolutely humiliating to let that much money go through your hands. And I see it with contractors I coach. They don't know how to pay themselves first. They don't know how to stay ahead of the money and they don't have a bank to have their back. Now, Patrick is with a company, and that company has done some amazing things for my company. What they've done, unlike other funding partners that require large percentages of jobs, they have offered a affordable way to fund my insurance claims projects. Now, where I'm at right now, I have 100, 150 projects a week coming through the pipeline. And what happens is, is that about 30 to 40 of those projects have a mortgage. And with the mortgage, I have a complete different department. We send it off to the mortgage company. Yep. We have a contract with the customer, but we don't build the job. And it takes 30 days, maybe maybe 40 days, to get all the paperwork back from the mortgage company and get the check back. When we get the check back, we start the job. So now, I don't really have the problem of me being broke, but I have a problem of not being able to build the jobs fast enough. And I, one thing I would say about that, Lee, to the people out there watching, especially in Florida, the AOB law changing like it did, that gap of time that I see so many contractors have in production, that four to six week time where you're waiting for that money to come in, that's where the questions start to come in in that homeowner's mind. Am I making the right decision? Should I go with somebody else? And I understand everybody out there has their cancellation clause in their contract. I know that. But what we want to do is let's not give that homeowner time to think about it. They've signed up with Lee. They've signed up with you guys. Whatever contractor is out there, they've signed up with you. Let's immediately move to production so we can get that roof on. We shouldn't be waiting. Let's get that roof on now. Let's not give them time to think about that. Okay, so guys... The biggest thing holding you back may be lack of access to working capital. We're going to show you how to get it, but I want to know a little bit more about you, Patrick, sure. um, because Patrick came to me without an appointment and was able to bring a value proposition as a, I consider a door knock opportunity. Sure, you, you knocked on my door, you knock on roofers doors every day and you had a great value. I, I, I tried the service out and I'm incredibly proud to say that we're partnered and we're going to be offering people in my network access to working capital. Yep. Now, um, how'd you get into this business? What, what have you been doing? So uh, maybe I'll start with this morning, if that's all right. I'll kind of work my way yeah. backwards. Um, just so everyone kind of understands how I run my business. I'm a partner in the company. I'm out there every day, though, when I hit the streets. It's green light maximum recovery. You can yep. go to www.myclaimscare.com and check that out. Just I appreciate so you know. it. And so what I do is I go out there and I door knock. And to give you an idea, before I even saw you today, Lee, I had my first meeting I went to, and the guy didn't show up for the meeting. Had the second meeting I went to and got a no. Third meeting I went to, got a no. And that's before I even saw you at what, noon, 1 o'clock? Mm -hmm. I go there, and I woke up in Orlando this morning at 4 a.m. to come down to West Florida to make it happen because we got a hurricane that was rolling through here. Mm -hmm. So basically, no, no, no. And that's okay with me. You know, I'm not gonna stop moving forward. I'm gonna go knock on the biggest fish I can right now. Now I'm gonna go to, this is the one that matters right here. I'm gonna walk in the door and make this one happen. And I think that a lot of people that they hear no and they get down on themselves. They start to think, you know, now what? You know what I mean? It's me, it's, what, it's my pitch. Sometimes you're gonna run across to no, man. That's okay. 
Keep pushing forward. Look, you know how the universe works, and you've obviously been doing some growth strategies there on them arms. Hey, okay, man. You got a little background as a hey, bodybuilder here, that's right? But the truth is, is like, do you go to failure? How does this? How do you? How, do you? How do you? Obviously, how does that translate in sales? Because whenever I go to failure in sales, I know one thing: if I lose a deal, that when times are the darkest, you're that much closer to the light. Meaning, basically. When one door closes, another door opens. And if you got three no's, then that just set up yourself to have a badass appointment with me, you Absolutely. know? And it worked out great. It worked out great. So how, how does that relate? Difference between wants and needs is what I tell my guys. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want something, you won't do it. I'll give you an example. Bodybuilding is, you know, or going to the gym. I know you're boxing. If you want to do that every night, you'll never do it. It'll always be something that comes in the way of your wants that you have. If you need something, if it's a part of who you are, if it's a part of your character, then you'll make it happen. I don't want to be great at this company. I don't want this company to succeed. For me, I need it to succeed. I'm not gonna let anything stand in the way of doing that. I do it for myself, I do it for my business partner, I do it for my family. It's a need in my life. When I get home tonight, back to Orlando, and I'm tired as hell, I need to go to the gym because it's a, necess it's a necessity in my life. It's part of who I am. And that's where I think that some, I think some businesses don't look at that. Well, they don't. They, they don't realize. They think, okay, we just got our asses kicked during the day. It was a hard day. Like I go to the boxing gym, and there's guys that have been landscaping all day. They've been, yeah. I'm doing like white collar work, making podcasts and stuff, and I'm going to the boxing gym. And these guys have been out in the yard working Man, their working. asses off, you know. Yeah. And th yet they go in and they push themselves in the gym harder or just as hard as I do. And why? You know, and there's a sense of there, what kind of energy for me, it's about the energy, but yeah. how, how do you manifest that energy to keep pushing? Cause I see a lot of contractors, they feel burnt out. They're slow and sluggish. They eat the extra burger. They're smoking cigarettes. The energy is down. Is it low T? What, why is their energy down? Yeah. So I think, I mean, if we're going off of that, you know, when I, when I get to the gym, and stuff, you've got to be able to prioritize and you've got to be able to compartmentalize where your life is. And I, I think that's a very undervalued asset in business owners today is to say, listen, I'm going home. I got a family I got to look after. I got to compartmentalize the family right here. I got to compartmentalize all the energy I'm going to need to make my body the best it's going to be. I got to compartmentalize my business because what I got to do over here, you can't let this right here ruin these other parts of your life with who you are, because then it's just going to bleed over into everything. That's where people's energy, in my opinion, just gets drained. Yeah, we were You're, talking earlier about, you know, the fact that we are just like anyone else. At the end of the day, you deal with stress. Yep. You, you'd you like to have a beer. I, I love to drink beer. I love to drink vodka. Yep. Uh, just about anything. Yep. I like to get crunk. All right. <laughs> the point is that, you know, it drains you of your energy. And it's almost like as an optimist, you can you, you heard that alcohol is a depressant. Yeah. But you you don't really realize it because you seem all happy while you're having a few drinks. I know the truth. <laughs> you, you struggle with some of that too. Um, I'd be lying if I said it, I, I don't. And um, I think part of becoming a better business owner, I failed in my first three businesses that I had and failed royally. Um, I, I took I took everything that I had made, I invested it, and I just failed. Mm -hmm. um, and that put me through some really low, low times. Um, and I think that people, it's important to remember, especially if you're just starting out or you're like me, I struggled with Instagram and watching the people that have all the success, quote unquote, and having to see that shit. It's just a highlight reel is what it is. Um, and uh, so that- I don't, share, I don't share the parts that, you know, my wife says, I'm so sick of this. I'm, you're, you're disconnected and I'm, yeah. you get your ass in gear. I don't share the parts where, you know, best friends, inner circle, turmoil, the str stress of the people yeah. that are closest to me, testing me to the very limits, trying to take as much as possible, me trying to hold the line. And guess what? Michael Jordan got into tears when he was on that last dance and he's talking about how, what do you think about Scottie Pippen not liking you? You know what he said? He said, you know what? It's hard as fuck holding the line, yeah. holding the line of greatness, constantly being the person that's setting the standard, constantly raising the bar. And so, you know, for me, um, that is the reason why this year I had to transform. I had to have as much energy as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, our business went from doing a million a week to doing three to four million a week. And even a guy like me needs funding because when you grow 300 to 400 percent overnight, 
what happens is, is that you grow your material and labor expense. You have to have more people and more overhead to keep up. You don't have the revenue from the gains, and now you have a hot market. So all your advertising strategies yep. that have been killing the game and dominating even a lukewarm market, they need to be exploded on. You need to go 10x harder than you were going. Lead mm -hmm. costs are down. You need your capital. It's like literally like gasoline to the fire. And the problem is, is that when I have stacks of files, 100 files mm -hmm. that have mortgage checks, I have files that we we can't bill because there's no money. Now I go, I get that capital, I start that project, I accelerate the time that it takes me to get the referrals to make the salesperson happy. I accelerate, you know, and here's the thing, in the past I've never done funding before, guys, because it costs too much money. Because the reality is is that my margin after a certain amount of overhead is Anywhere in roofing, I'd say from eight to twenty percent. Mm -hmm. You know, my goal this year was to run at a fifteen percent margin, right. but I wasn't going to give up all of my margin or two thirds of my margin just so I could have my money now. Although, if I knew then how to buy a roof for five hundred dollars with my marketing campaigns, then mm -hmm. it would be a completely different story. Okay, um, because in theory, because if I have that money now and I can buy those projects for later, that that money's going to make me more money when a bird in the hands were two in the bush See all the time. And so, um, you know, I have started to work with green light here through one of my managers. And one thing I said, dude, we're not doing that. We don't need the money. We're, we don't need that. And two hurricanes later, multi-million dollars and commercial jobs invested building out million dollars a week in labor payroll, having a hundred jobs maybe held up because of mortgage. And now, Sitting in this position, I'm looking at, okay, last time you didn't do this because the percentage was too much. It cost too much. Okay. Then you made me an offer that I couldn't refuse. Mm -hmm. And and talk to me a little bit about uh, that offer. So what you just described is the problem that so many roofing contractors have. When you're involved in the insurance game, you're going out and you're selling a job, okay? But just when you sell the job, there's no insurance company stroking you a check for a 20 grand roof. The insurance process is convoluted and takes time. There are multiple checks. You could have as many as four checks coming to you as a, as a contractor. You could have an ACV. You could have a depreciation. You could have a supplement. You could have a deductible. You've got a process that is convoluted and drawn out. So when I came to you, Leah, I said, hey, listen, when we go ahead and we get this roof approved, let's put the money in your pocket. Let's go ahead and get the money in your pocket now. You guys stay, stay in the black. You put the roof on, and then we know what? We will be the ones who handle getting that money on the back end. We'll worry about the endorsements. We'll worry about making sure that those insurance proceeds are released. For a roofing contractor, do what you do best, not chase down money on the back end. Sales reps should be worried about selling their jobs. Get out there and sell more. Free up that time for those reps to be out there putting roofs on and selling roofs, not chasing down endorsements from Wells Fargo out there. That's where I think there's the real value. It's not just the funding, like you said. It's everything that goes with it. It's to sell. It's making sure that sales reps sell. It's making sure that right when that roof gets approved, you're going right to production. While your competition in that same neighborhood is having to wait for checks to come back in, no, not you. You're moving right to production. You're taking over that neighborhood. That's what it's about. Now, if I'm the roofer watching this, I say I've heard this pitch before, and it sounds very slick. And what's the catch? And so the catch here is that – you know, for a ten thousand or maybe even a twenty thousand dollar project, you mm -hmm. might pay five hundred to a thousand dollars. But the truth is, on those projects, I make anywhere from uh, three thousand three thousand five hundred as much to ten thousand dollars. And so, you know, you look at you know what you can do with the money in your hands versus what it costs to get it. And the reason why people have never done it before is that um, there's been a predatory lending in the past Absolutely. and it was uh, unfortunate because there were uh, instances where the contractors were giving up all of their profit margin to the funding company mm -hmm. and what I want to do is never recommend to a contractor something that would be unhealthy to his bottom line never. and this is not that this is 30 to 40 percent better value this allows me literally at the, almost the same rate that Grant Cardone gets money lended to him on a multifamily apartment, which 
you don't, it don't get any lower than what it, the number's at right now, yep. people. Yep. And if, if you need funding, I'm telling you, this guy is getting me funding to grow my business cheaper than I can get anywhere else. And if you want to comment below, we'll get you access to a conversation with Patrick. Um, just comment below. Of course, I want you to subscribe. I want you to pay attention. Me and Patrick are going to be doing a lot of trainings. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, I want Patrick to speak at our upcoming event about this challenge where contractors run out of capital and the consequences. What are the th consequences you've seen of them running out of capital? Well, what happens is it builds up over time. It's not just the capital that you get this month. Okay, so now you don't have that money. Well, that now you now you've got a depreciation check that hasn't come in. That's another three grand onto the money that you don't got. You're always chasing your tail month after month as you start to not as you start to gain. So you put on you're selling more roofs. Great, that's good. But what money do you have coming in the door? Selling roofs is not going to pay the mortgage. Selling roofs is not what's going to grow the company, in my opinion. It's having working capital to grow your money, to grow your business. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of a reason why uh, it's hard to let you in on my files. This is what they're thinking. They're thinking, I don't want to go through and have a bunch of paperwork signed off. I don't want someone to make me look bad with my customer. Sure. I don't want someone to slow up my insurance claim process or my job. And so yeah. what I thought was really unique about your process was it's just as simple as a text message. What we do is we provide a text message to each of our contractors, a text message line. Once they go out there and they sell the roof, all you've simply got to do is take a picture of that work authorization, send it over to us, and you're done. We will take care of the rest. Our team is going to reach out to that homeowner, explain that we're the claims care specialist to help walk them through the process. Funding, if, if, if anyone hears that funding is the only thing that we do here, that is a small part. It's caring for the claim for your customer. Customer service is essential with an insurance claim. Most customers, it's their first time ever filing an insurance claim. Do they know what a loss statement is? No. They need somebody to walk them through that process. We're going to put the money in the contractor's pocket right away to put a roof on. But what about those other trades as well? What about all the things that we're going to be able to help that homeowner with on the back end? That's the kind of stuff where you really add in value. And this is where you can't have funding without insurance supplementing. And so obviously yes. you're dealing with the insurance company. You're doing the supplements. You're, so how does that work? So once the, once the roof is being ripped off, and, and, and there's always going to be things that come up. At that time, we're working with that contractor through that same text line. Pictures, videos are going back and forth between me and my supplement team. We're supplementing it out. My, excuse me, my goal is always the same. I want your supplements released with that depreciation check. That is my goal of my team. That is what I push them for. I want one check coming on the back end because that's what I want you to get right there. That's going to speed up your process, and that's what we're working for each and every day. You know, you brought up a good point. There's a lot of people that watch this that uh, aren't doing a lot of insurance. They're retail roofers and they're trying to do more. And, you know, coming into a group that's doing as much as we are, you know, what's your advice to guys that are just trying to get into the insurance game? To, to, well, first, I would say this is that if you're wanting to get in the insurance game, it's a good game to be in. All right. Amen. Um, if you want to make money, get in the insurance game. I see too many people that are scared of what they don't know, so they don't get in there. The second thing is you've got to understand what you're selling. All right. You've got to get in there and understand the insurance process. It's not a cash job here. This is a different thing. Now, all the principles are still the same. You still got to do discovery. You still got to get in there and do what you got to do. But you better understand what the process is like for that homeowner. You got to provide customer service. I've seen you do your trainings on it. I would suggest that they get in with training and figure out, hey, let me get my sales team together here and say, okay, we don't understand insurance. Let's get together with someone like Lee. Let's get together and understand how we're going to sell this product, how we're going to open up this side of our business. Yeah, so look, if you're interested in growing your insurance side, if you have a retail roofing business and you want to yeah. scale that as oh, well, yeah. We have something called Sky Diamonds Elite, and Patrick is a fan of the YouTube channel. He came in cold called, so I wanted to give him something special, okay? I got a special thing <laughs> for you, brother. Oh, boy. When people buy my Sky Diamonds Elite package, they get weekly calls, they get live events, okay. they get help with their marketing, but they also get this box. What do we got? All right, open up that box. There's a book in there that's going to change your life. There's about three books in there that are going to change right. your life. 
The first book uh, is the book. Uh, actually, I didn't write the book. It's on the other side, I think. Well, I think yeah, I'm going to embarrass myself give him, here. Give them the whole meat. Just rip it right open. I'm yeah, just kidding. Yeah, meathead type thing here. No, you can figure it out. Come on, man. Come on, man. So there's a book. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's tricky. It comes from come the on, sides. Come on, Lee. Now you, now, now you just embarrass me. Everyone oh, on here is going to think. Let me see that. Everyone on here is going to think I'm a fucking meathead now. <laughs> it's all right. There it is. It's all right. There, there we go. go. Okay. So, uh, got you a large Sky Diamonds hat. Love it, man. You're a part of the elite group, and uh, we're honored to have you a part of the group. Got you my book. Um, inside that oh, book, sure. you can. there's a framework there called the Hidden Damage Build Video and Testimonial Framework for Facebook ads. But it's the great. biggest thing, when you're teaching other s companies, yeah. my process, the five eyes of the blue collar clothes, the detail of that, my door-to-door -door six pack, and when you're talking to people about how to grow their insurance brand, that is really going to help you. Now, building your personal brand, one thing about this podcast, you've had some incredible insight on uh, energy, on working out, on sales. And so I think you are a thought leader and influencer. Where can they find you on Instagram? So uh, Instagram, it's a, my whole tag. Yeah. A tie makes sense. A tie makes sense. You That's can, it. Like literally a tie makes sense. You That's can right. find him at A-T-I-E, makes sense. And um, Some fun stuff there. The thing is, is guys, uh, I want to help people tell their story so people's listen. And when you had me look at your social media page, all I did was take a look at it and say how you could clarify the message so people could listen. And once you get people to pay attention to you and you tell stories that sell and you build a story or brand around yourself, you will attract the customers that you want, all right? Mm -hmm. And so the journey of building a story brand in the framework of how you tell stories, that, that book is very important. It's the first thing I prescribe people to do in the marketing exercise. Now, a lot of roofers, they join my program. I'm like, man, you're giving me a lot of homework. That's great <laughs> but, stuff, man. But it's great. And then, so right there is the scaling roadmap. And that basically will take you through my entire system. That's great. And, you know, there's 11 phases to it. And you can basically go into a roofing office. You can see what phase they're in. And then you can use that book to give them the prescription to go to the next step. And that's what we want to do. We want to help these people grow. Yeah. I mean, there's enough There's enough to go around for everybody. I want good companies that I work with. And that, for me, that's what's important, is that I want to work with good companies. I want to work with companies that want to grow. Now, wait a second here. We what do you got? This may be the best and most important part. Okay. Show it to me, man. We've got the uh, Sky Diamonds T. Hey, man. Hey, the now. The biggest deal is, I bro. Love it. You're That's a knock great. star, dog. That's you came great. in here, you knocked on the door, you yeah. had a couple of rejections today. But what we're doing right now is digital door knocking. And this is truly scale because whenever I send this out to my list, you're going to find contractors that need funding. As a matter yep. of fact, if that's you, comment below. We'll get in touch with you. We'll get you in touch with Patrick. We're, we're all, what all states you cover? 13 different states across the southeast. So anything you're going from Texas, Georgia, Tennessee, Louisiana, of course, Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, Missouri, uh, all the way up to Virginia. So you name it. All throughout there. All right. So um, if you need help with your insurance claims, if you need help with funding, Patrick at Greenlight Maximum Recovery, www.myclaimstore, uh, myclaimscare.com. As a matter, right. matter of fact, I'm going to pull up the website right now. Um, tell me a little bit about the company and how long you've been in business and, and some of the clients um, that you've been servicing and what you've learned over the years. Sure. We started, uh, myself and my business partner, about five years ago. We started under another umbrella called Greenlight. Mm -hmm. um, we did collections and receivables work, which we still do for contractors. Um, we saw a need, though, in the industry, fast forward to 2019, of about the 4,000 files that we got, delinquent files from contractors. About 80%, 90% of them had to do with the insurance game. People taking the deductible check and not paying them. People taking that supplement check because it only had their name on it and not giving it. Then I saw people who do cash jobs, you know, doing the 33% up front, 33 on dry, and then maybe 33 at the completion. Well, that last 33%, the person didn't want to pay because they had cracks in the driveway or they had some other excuse about a rose bush being destroyed. You know, there were all sorts of things that we saw. But what we really saw a pattern of was insurance. The insurance game is set up for people not getting their money. It's set up to be a long-winded game for the contractor. So what we tried to do is we developed My Claims Care to get rid of AR for insurance claims. I think that's so important to get across. Eliminate the accounts Eliminate receivable. Eliminate accounts receivable from your game. Gain net worth. 
now you don't have accounts receivable. And people got to really wrap their head around that for insurance claims. What do you mean? How can I never have an accounts receivable? Well, every time you sell a job and that job gets approved, we're going to fund you. The money is now in your pocket. When you build that roof, you're not going in, you're not going below. You're always in the black here. That's how we scale the businesses and help them grow. I got a roofer down in Tampa I was with two days ago. We're talking somebody who goes from three to seven roofs a week, now doing 17 to 24 roofs a week because they don't have to worry about capital. When they sell, approval, money, roof, they're done. They're moving on to the next roof right there. Their guys are out selling 100% of the time. They're not having to go down to Wells Fargo and do endorsements. They're not having to go back out to that house to pick up checks. All that is being handled by our team. It's customer service with funding. And you mentioned early these other companies that have failed with the funding side. It's because, in my opinion, they don't look at the customer service. You don't look at what is the homeowner experience that they're going through. We are an extension of the contractor. I'm working alongside your back office. My job is not just to make sure you're always funded, but to make sure that homeowner is happy with the service that we provide. We'll do a completion call with that homeowner to make sure they're happy and very and everything went well. We're going to push for referrals and five-star reviews for that individual. We're not just funding. Funding's part of what we do, but your reputation as a contractor is just as important in working with us. We're an extension of you. And maximizing claims through supplement. Right. You've got it. You've got to be your supplements are your money maker. Well, if you charge 10% of the gain and the customers like, you know, getting uh, 5,000, $10,000 for 500 to $1,000, dude, that's what we do with our guys. I don't have a problem paying that. Yep. You know, my guys don't have a problem paying that. So if I'm a nine figure roofing company, why, why does a small $2 million company have a problem paying that when they can't even get it done on their own? Yep. So what gives us the advantage of these, you can imagine, a lot of sales reps out there, people that are watching this, that don't like to go back out to the house. Mm. Sales reps traditionally like to sell the roof mm. and be done with it. Mm. They don't like to go back out there. For whatever reason, they're scared mm. to go back out after the sale. If you think that might be happening in your company, what we're going to do is be that third party to step in there, do a call with that homeowner, build the relationship, and then be able to push for those referrals on the back end to help that roofing contractor grow. Well, there's something holding everybody back from growth either they don't have a recruiting process or they don't have a lead generation they buy leads they go to home advisor they don't know how to generate the leads or they don't know how to you know train their sales guys to go out there and knock doors and get the insurance deals or they have a process with uh production and collections that's yeah. that's failing them and so if you're watching this right now and you want my help to scale your business it ain't cheap uh, as a matter of fact, every single person that implements the system in that scaling blueprint doubles, triples, quadruples sales. We've had over 12 guys put seven figures in their profit go, in their pocket going through those systems. So, mm -hmm. so what I can tell the viewer, the contractor is, if you have five, ten jobs that are that are sitting in mortgage, and and you give Patrick a call. He can get you the funding that you need to plug the holes in the boat that you have, so that you can get. Sky Diamonds Elite, weekly coaching from me, get plugged into our network, get help with the marketing, help with the recruiting, help with the growth. This mentorship is not always easy, man. The thing yep. is, is everybody wants to sugarcoat it, tell them what they want to hear. You need more leads. I can help you close 30% more deals. But the yep. truth is, is that they, they, they need to be more self-aware that, you know, the truth is, is like a lot of these guys are, are too proud to... Um, you know, take advice from the competition or, or take advice from an outside consultant. They got it all figured out. And what I can tell you is, is, is you, you may be great at sales. You may be great at operations, but over the last 15 years, this is all I've done. Mm -hmm. uh, since 1993, it's all my family's done. I got taught by a lot of people, a lot of people behind me. I'm not a self-made man. Nope. So about five years ago, I started hiring outside coaches, hired some of the best from digital marketing to sales training to CEO coaches. I spent a fortune on ads and coaching and these unorthodox things I've learned, like that book, How to Tell a Story So People Listen, mm -hmm. have made me millions of dollars in a space that no one applies these strategies. Mm -hmm. And so these guys, they can't get this information or this system anywhere else. We are the only coach that does nine figures in business and generates nine figures in business for their clients. Yep. And so if they can pay for that by giving you a few files, why wouldn't they join Elite? If you're not, there is countless people watching this, no doubt, that when they look at their AR right now, they've got files 
files that are sitting out there that they're waiting on endorsements from mortgage companies. They've done the roof. They don't have the money for it right now. Give me a call. I will get you the capital right now. We'll direct deposit the darn thing into your account. We'll wait on that money from now on. You got 50 grand now in your account. You turn around and call you, get your sales reps in here and start growing your business because that's what you can do overnight. You have capital right now. People out there, they, they, the, the scarcity mind, the scarcity mind. Well, it, there is a, a limited amount of spots in the elite program. We're very selective of who they work with. We're looking for guys to do a minimum of a million dollars in business a year. Sure. We like them to have a sales team. They have to have a minimum of two thousand to four thousand dollars a month to invest into growth. You know, uh, and if they don't have that, I'm not really interested in helping them. My time is worth at least five thousand an hour, <laughs> and I give them, you know, a hundred percent one hour a week. And so, you know, what we want to do is we want to help these contractors get real advice from real systems because there's a lot of fake bullshit information. Fake shit out there. There's too much guys that, that whether they were a college kid and they just woke up and now they're a digital marketer or they failed three roofing businesses and now they're a roofing coach or they – I, I trained a guy in Sky Diamonds. He worked for me for about six months before he opened his own sales training company, and he hadn't even built 100 roofs, and now he's an expert teaching you how to run your business. Mm -hmm. So if you're sick of some of these guys and you want me to help you grow your business, but the only thing that's been holding you back is the funding to make it happen, yep. type in Sky Diamonds Elite. I'll get you hooked up with Patrick. We'll trade a few files. He'll get you the funding that you need, yep. and we'll be rocking and rolling, generating leads, helping you hire salespeople, helping you land large commercial projects, and imagine if some of those ones they don't have money for, they haven't put the roof on yet. Let's get them the funding and put the damn roof on. You don't know how many times people tell me, dude, I'll join your program when we put this roof on, when we do this, when we right. collect this, when I have this. And really with this type of opportunity, and like I said, there's been previous people offer funding and there's been people offer factoring. That's not what this is. This is completely different. This is partnering with someone who helps in the supplement, the invoicing, and someone who does it at a way that doesn't take all your profits or two thirds of your profits. Or sometimes, you know, you're not even taking away like a very small, like 300, 400, $500 per job is nothing. Right. You know, so um, if that's something you're interested in, type in Sky Diamonds Elite there in the comments. You can go to myclaimscare.com. You got it. Patrick, do you have a phone number that they can call you on? I give you my cell phone always, 407-766-9701, 407-766-9701. Greenlight Maximum Recovery is going to be at the Seven Figure Contractor Mastermind March 12th at the Diplomat. We have now announcing some <laughs> big time heavy hitting speakers. Hadn't really announced this yet. Ed Milet, Jesse Itzler, and Brad Lee <laughs> Fact, coming Br to bring. Oh, wait. Brad Lee is enough right there, man, to get out there. Myron Golden. If you don't know about Myron it's Golden, stuff. dude, Myron is from Tampa and he's one of my biggest mentors. He's my coach out of all those guys. Awesome. I go to Myron for sales training and he's like my little known secret. And so uh, I'm going to be introducing you to Myron. Ed changed my life. He literally is a man on a mission to eradicate like uh, the middle class's problems of not knowing money, not knowing how to sell, not knowing how to scale. And, you know, Ed comes from a background of funding and financing as well. So, um, right. guys, if you want to be a part of this, uh, I really appreciate it. Subscribe to this video. Make sure that you get notifications. Comment below if you'd like access to some funding to grow your business. Comment Absolutely. Elite if you'd like that funding to get you access to work in my private client group. Now, if you're coachable, if you're willing to put 10 to 15 hours a week into the program, if you have the resources and the time and the effort and the energy and you're not one of these snowflakes who quit at the first sign of something tough, then this might be for you. So go ahead, type in Sky Diamonds Elite in the comments. And, uh, man, thank you, Patrick. I, I appreciate, really appreciate you coming time, here, man. Thanks, this man. is great, it. dude. There you go. Door knocking, working at its best right there, there brother. There you go, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks.